was taken. Why do you say that, man? Well, it's a very serious thing, and I didn't want to mention it. What's that? Well, I left... In the early 1950s, the casting process for the groundbreaking TV series Dragnet was initiated. The show's creator, Jack Webb, had a clear vision for the characters and the show's tone, which influenced the casting decisions. For the role of Sergeant Joe Friday, Webb himself was the natural choice. Having portrayed the character in a successful radio series, Webb brought an authenticity and familiarity to the role that resonated with audiences. His no-nonsense, straight-laced demeanor became the embodiment of the show. The process of casting Friday's partner, Officer Frank Smith, proved to be more challenging. After numerous auditions, Ben Alexander was ultimately chosen for the role. His chemistry with Webb and his ability to balance Friday's sternness with a touch of humor made him the perfect counterpart. The supporting roles were cast with similar care. Actors such as Herbert Ellis, who played Officer Bill Lockwood, and Richard Boone, who appeared as Captain Hamilton, were chosen for their ability to bring depth and authenticity to their characters, enhancing the realism that Dragnet was known for. Chemistry tests played a crucial role in the casting process. Webb and the producers wanted to ensure that the actors would not only excel in their roles individually, but also have a strong dynamic when working together. These tests helped to solidify the casting decisions and create the iconic duo of Friday and Smith. In summary, the casting process for Dragnet was meticulous and focused on finding actors who could bring authenticity and chemistry to their roles. Webb's clear vision and the commitment to realism resulted in a memorable an enduring series that left a lasting impact on television history. You know, every place he's ever been, we plugged every loophole we can think of, the depots, terminals, the airports, still. The director of the 1951 TV series Dragnet, Jack Webb, had a clear and distinctive vision for the show. Webb, who also starred as Sergeant Joe Friday, aimed to present true-to-life stories based on real police cases. His approach was characterized by a straightforward, no-nonsense style, which was reflected in the show's famous opening line, Ladies and gentlemen, the story you are about to see is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Webb's creative influences included his own background in radio and his deep respect for the work of law enforcement officers. He sought to create a realistic portrayal of police work, avoiding sensationalism and focusing on the details of each case. This approach was reflected in the show's simple, unadorned visual style, which was designed to put the viewer's focus on the story and the characters. Webb's directorial style was highly collaborative. He worked closely with the show's writers, producers, and cast to ensure that everyone was on the same page and that the show's vision was consistently realized. He was known for his meticulous attention to detail, insisting on accuracy in every aspect of the production, from the props and set design to the actor's performances. One of Webb's key collaborators was cinematographer Jack Amarta, who worked on the show for its entire run. Marta's camera work was instrumental in creating the show's distinctive look, which was characterized by its use of naturalistic lighting and its avoidance of flashy visual techniques. Together, Webb and Marta created a visual style that was simple, understated, and highly effective in conveying the show's stories and themes. In addition to his work with the cast and crew, Webb was also deeply committed to the show's music. He worked closely with composer Walter Schumann to create the show's iconic theme music, which featured a haunting, repetitive motif that became instantly recognizable to audiences. The music was an essential part of the show's identity helping to establish its unique tone and atmosphere. Overall, the directorial vision behind Dragnet was characterized by a commitment to realism, collaboration, and attention to detail. Jack Webb's approach to storytelling, combined with the contributions of his talented cast and crew, helped to create a show that was both influential and enduring, leaving a lasting mark on the history of television. Be too automatic. At eight bullets in it. Where's the gun now? Threw it away. Where? One of the parts of them. Dragnet is a classic TV series that first aired in 1951, known for its groundbreaking approach to crime dramas. It features two detectives, Joe Friday and his partner, as they solve cases in Los Angeles. The show's straightforward storytelling and realistic depiction of police work set it apart from other shows of the time. Many fans of Dragnet have cherished memories associated with this show. 
Maybe you watched it with your family every week, or you admired the cool, calm demeanor of Joe Friday, played by Jack Webb. Whatever your connection to the show, there are sure to be many surprising, funny, and even sad facts coming up, so stay tuned. Do you have a favorite classic Hollywood actor in Dragnet? Was it Jack Webb as Joe Friday, or perhaps Ben Alexander as his partner, Frank Smith? We would love to hear about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this iconic TV series. Share your stories and memories in the comments below. How's it going? Nothing. Russ Camp just called about Stacy's gun. Yeah. Maybe we found Dragnet, a groundbreaking TV series that first aired in 1951, was known for its realistic and innovative production. The show's set design was meticulously crafted to recreate the look and feel of real-life locations, such as police stations and crime scenes. To achieve this, the production team paid close attention to details like wall textures, furniture, and lighting. They even went so far as to use real police files and equipment to ensure authenticity. The series was primarily filmed on sound stages in Los Angeles, but the production team also ventured out to location shoots to capture exterior scenes. This required careful planning and coordination, as the team had to secure permits and navigate the logistics of filming on location. One of the most innovative aspects of Dragnet's production was its use of single camera filming. At the time, most TV shows were filmed using multiple cameras, but Dragnet's creators opted for a more cinematic approach. This allowed them to achieve a higher level of visual quality and control the pacing of each scene more effectively. Another notable feature of Dragnet's production was its use of live sound recording. Instead of dubbing dialogue in post-production, the actors' lines were recorded live on set. This added to the show's realism and helped to create a more immersive viewing experience. Despite these innovations, the production of Dragnet was not without its challenges. The show's commitment to realism meant that the production team had to work quickly and efficiently to capture each scene. This required careful planning and coordination, as well as the ability to adapt to unexpected issues on set. Overall, the production of Dragnet was a testament to the show's dedication to realism and innovation. Through its meticulous set design, location shoots, and groundbreaking production techniques, the series helped to set a new standard for TV drama. Yeah, that's right. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Lousy deal. Find out who did it. Dragnet is a highly regarded television crime show from the 1950s, e, known for its no frills approach to storytelling. The series, presented in a semi documentary style, follows Sergeant Joe Friday and his sidekick, Frank Smith, as they investigate and solve real life crime stories. The duo's intense investigative work often leads them to their suspect, whether it's a man or a woman, ensuring that justice is served. Filmed in black and white, each episode of Dragnet runs for approximately 25 minutes. The show's popularity endures to this day, with its realistic portrayal of police work and matter-of-fact delivery captivating audiences. The series is also notable for its memorable theme music, which has become synonymous with police dramas. Despite being a product of its time, Dragnet remains accessible to modern audiences. The show's straightforward storytelling and timeless themes of justice and law enforcement continue to resonate with viewers. Whether you're a fan of classic television or simply looking for a compelling crime drama, Dragnet is definitely worth a watch. About five to six hours every night, building up his hands and fingers. Well, how'd he do that? He was the upper bunk. The creation of the Dragnet musical score and soundtrack was a meticulous process, with the music specifically composed to complement the narrative an emotional tone of the TV series. Miklos Rosa, the show's primary composer, aimed to create a minimalist yet impactful score that would enhance the show's realism and intensity. Rosa's approach was to use a small ensemble of musicians, primarily consisting of strings, woodwinds, and percussion. This choice of instrumentation allowed for a more focused and precise musical accompaniment that mirrored the show's no-nonsense, straightforward style. The music was often sparse, with simple melodies and harmonies that subtly underscored the action on screen. The soundtrack's most iconic piece is the Dragnet theme, which consists of a steady, rhythmic pulse accompanied by a haunting, descending melody. This theme became synonymous with the show and its depiction of the Los Angeles Police Department. Ross's use of a their men, an electronic instrument with a unique, eerie sound, 
further contributed to the theme's distinctive character. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of the Dragnet score and soundtrack understood the importance of their work in enhancing the show's overall impact. They worked closely with the show's creators and producers to ensure that the music aligned perfectly with the narrative and emotional beats of each episode. The result was a cohesive and effective musical backdrop that elevated the show's realism and intensity, making it a groundbreaking achievement in television music. In summary, the Dragnet musical score and soundtrack were carefully crafted to complement the show's narrative and emotional tone. Through the use of a small ensemble of musicians and a minimalist yet impactful approach, composers like Miklos Rosa created a musical backdrop that enhanced the show's realism and intensity, leaving a lasting impact on the world of television music. As Mary Walker had told us, each person present had signed his or her name and address in the attendance book. We took the record down. Richard L. Breen, the writer of the Dragnet episode The Big Little Jesus, penned this script only after agreeing to write the 1954 movie based on the show. This particular episode stands out as Breen's sole contribution to the series. The show also gained notoriety through its spoof in Mad Magazine, titled Dragnet, which poked fun at the original series. This parody reflected the show's cultural impact and widespread recognition during its time. Moreover, among the many real-life police officers who submitted story ideas for Dragnet was Gene Roddenberry, who would later create the iconic series Star Trek. Roddenberry's involvement in Dragnet highlights the show's appeal to those in law enforcement and its influence on future television productions. Late Saturday morning, we got a call from an ex-convict who told us that Hoffman had contacted him. Hoffman said he wanted to see him. The informant went on. One of the most iconic scenes in the 1951 TV series Dragnet is the opening sequence, where Sergeant Joe Friday introduces the show with a straightforward narration against the backdrop of the American flag and the sound of a beating drum. The simplicity and directness of the scene set the tone for the entire series, with Friday's matter-of-fact delivery becoming a Dragnet trademark. Director Jack Webb, who also played Friday, wanted to create a show that was authentic and realistic. He achieved this by using actual police files as the basis for each episode and filming many scenes on location. The opening sequence, with its unadorned visuals and minimalist music, perfectly encapsulates Webb's vision for the series. Another iconic scene is the interrogation room sequence where Friday and his partner, Ben Romero, interview suspects and witnesses. These scenes are characterized by their stark lighting and sparse sets, which focus the viewer's attention on the dialogue and performances. Webb and his co-star, Barton Yarbrough, deliver their lines with a deadpan sincerity that adds to the show's realism and intensity. The cinematography in Dragnet is also noteworthy with its use of high contrast lighting and deep shadows. Cinematographer Jack Marta, who worked on many classic film noir movies, brought his expertise to the series, creating a visual style that was both gritty and elegant. The show's black and white photography adds to its sense of realism, while the dramatic lighting enhances the tension and drama of each scene. The impact of Dragnet on audiences was significant, with the show becoming one of the most popular and influential police procedurals in TV history. Its innovative use of realism and authenticity, as well as its memorable characters and catchphrases, have made it a cultural touchstone. In an interview with the Archive of American Television, Webb said of Dragnet, we wanted to do a cop show that was as realistic as possible, and I think we achieved that. Indeed, Dragnet's enduring legacy is a testament to Webb's vision and the show's enduring appeal. All right, get him back in there. Jack Webb, the creator and star of Dragnet, was easily recognizable by his distinctive hand motion in the show's logo sequence. In syndicated reruns, the series was sometimes titled Badge 714 to differentiate it from new episodes. The show's influence extended to the fictional Badge of Honor series in El Day Confidential, where a character is teased with the dragnet catchphrase, Just the Facts. Your description, woman armed with a 38 caliber automatic. And you think it's me? Is that what you mean? Dragnet, a 1950s TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact. The show resonated with audiences due to its unique format, which featured realistic portrayals of police work. It was one of the first TV shows to bring a factual approach to crime dramas, 
which was a departure from the more sensationalized portrayals of crime in popular media at the time. The show's influence on pop culture was substantial. Its iconic opening theme music and the distinctive delivery of lines like Just the Facts, Ma'am became ingrained in popular culture. The show's style and format have been copied and parodied in numerous other TV shows and movies demonstrating its enduring influence. Dragnet also contributed to discussions on relevant social and cultural themes. It tackled issues like juvenile delinquency, drug addiction, and organized crime, which were significant concerns in post-war America. By presenting these issues in a realistic and straightforward manner, the show helped to raise awareness and foster dialogue about these important social issues. In conclusion, Dragnet was a groundbreaking TV series that had a significant cultural and social impact. Its innovative format, influential style, and thoughtful engagement with relevant social issues have left a lasting mark on popular culture. Changes. Last year she had gray hair and dressed very plain. This year she dyed her hair black and dressed a little more expensively. Jack Webb, the creator and star of Dragnet, was known for his protection of the show's unique theme music. In the 1960s, when Stan Freeberg wanted to create a parody record of Dragnet, Webb was the only one who could grant him permission to use the theme. After playing St. George in the Dragon Net for Webb, Freeberg received the sought-after permission as Webb reportedly found it hilarious. The character of Friday's partner in the series underwent a change early on. Barton Yarbrough, who played Friday's first partner, fell ill during the production of the third episode and was expected to return. However, Yarbrough died of a heart attack on the day the third episode was completed, leading to the introduction of a new partner for Friday. Dragnet's semi-documentary format was inspired by the film noir classic He Walked by Night and the suggestion of a Los Angeles Police Department officer, Marty Wynn, who worked as a technical advisor on the show. This format was first used in the radio series, which debuted in 1949, before being adapted for television. She kept on saying it, dirty, dirty clothes. Now, she might have meant the man had work clothes. Dragnet, the 1951 television series, received positive reviews from both critics and audiences for its innovative and realistic approach to crime dramas. The show's creator, writer, and lead actor, Jack Webb, was praised for his meticulous attention to detail, which gave the series a sense of authenticity that was unprecedented at the time. The series was nominated for four Primetime Emmy Awards, including Outstanding Dramatic Series, and Jack Webb was nominated for Best Actor in a Leading Role. While the show didn't win any Emmys, the nominations themselves were a testament to the quality of the series and the impact it had on the television industry. Critics also applauded the show's innovative use of documentary-style storytelling, which added to the sense of realism. The New York Times called Dragnet a police show with a difference, highlighting the series' unspectacular, methodical, and often slow-moving approach to storytelling. Audiences responded positively to the show's straightforward and no-nonsense style. The series' catchphrases, such as Just the Fact, Ma'am, became part of popular culture and are still recognized today. The accolade and positive reception that Dragnet received were significant for those involved in the series. For Jack Webb, the success of the show established him as a talented writer, producer, and actor, and paved the way for his future projects. The series' innovative approach to storytelling also had a lasting impact on the television industry, inspiring other crime dramas to adopt a similar documentary-style approach. Overall, the critical reception and awards that Dragnet received were well-deserved, and helped to establish the series as a classic of early television. For the rest of the afternoon, Rogers, McClendon, and Frank and I spent our time canvassing the neighborhood in the vicinity of the Brown Barrel. In the mid-1950s, the popular TV series Dragnet made history by releasing a theatrical spin-off while the original series was still airing, marking two firsts in American television. Contrary to popular belief, the iconic line, just the facts, man was never spoken in the series, the correct phrase is all we want are the fact, ma'am. Dragnet's influence extended beyond the small screen when it was honored with a commemorative postage stamp by the U.S. Postal Service in 29. The stamp features Jack Webb, who played Sergeant Joe Friday, and is part of the early TV memory series, which includes other notable shows such as I Love Lucy, The Twilight Zone, and The Lone Ranger. 
this stamp, along with the other shows honored, serves as a testament to the enduring impact of early television on American culture. The straightforward and unassuming style of Dragnet, with its focus on facts and crime solving, has left a lasting mark, making it a memorable part of television history. Levinson and his partner Doherty from Highland Juvenile stood by. We called Captain Lorman and he arranged for a special detail to aid. During the filming of Dragnet, the iconic police procedural TV series that first aired in 1951, the cast and crew had many memorable experiences. Jack Webb, who played Sergeant Joe Friday and also produced the show, was known for his meticulous attention to detail. He insisted on authenticity, even having the actors wear real police uniforms and use real police jargon. One time, while filming a car chase scene, a stunt driver accidentally crashed into a parked car. Instead of getting angry, Jack Webb calmly walked over to the damaged vehicle and checked the license plate. When he saw that it belonged to a friend of his, he laughed and said, well, I guess I'll be paying for that. The show's theme music, composed by Walter Schumann, became instantly recognizable and added to the show's distinctive identity. The famous dum da dum dum sound was actually created by a bass singer, Vic Scone, who hummed the melody into a microphone. Ben Alexander, who played Friday's partner, Officer Frank Smith, was known for his kindness and generosity on set. He would often bring in treats for the cast and crew, and was always willing to lend a helping hand. Despite the show's serious tone, there were plenty of lighthearted moments behind the scenes. The cast and crew would often play practical jokes on each other, such as hiding props or playing tricks with the sound equipment. Overall, the making of Dragnet was a collaborative and enjoyable experience for all involved. The show's enduring popularity is a testament to the hard work and dedication of the cast and crew, as well as Jack Webb's vision for creating a realistic and engaging police drama. I've got a lot of nice presents for Stevie. The popular 1950s TV series, Dragnet, led to two million selling hit singles in 1953. Ray Anthony and his orchestra released Dragnet and comedian Stan Freeberg, along with Dawes Butler and June Foray, created a satire called St. George and the Dragonet, which topped the charts. The show's creator, Jack Webb, drew inspiration for Dragnet from his involvement in the investigation of the Black Dahlia murder case in Los Angeles during the 1940s. After the sudden death of Barton Yarbrough, Webb secured production time for Dragnet through Chesterfield Presents, an anthology series funded by Chesterfield Cigarettes. This allowed him to work through the challenging time and continue producing the show. Was it you know Hoffman? I've known him for years, ever since high school. He's nice enough. Dragnet, a 1950s TV series, holds a significant place in film history. It's known for its pioneering role in the police procedural genre, where the focus is on realistic depiction of police work. The show's creator, Jack Webb, starred as Sergeant Joe Friday, a no-nonsense by the book detective. This character became an iconic figure in American television. The show's influence on future filmmaking is evident in the numerous parodies and homages it has inspired. Its distinctive style, featuring matter-of-fact narration and realistic depiction of police work, has been emulated in many subsequent TV shows and movies. The show's iconic opening theme and Friday's signature line, Just the Facts, Ma'am, have become ingrained in popular culture. Dragnet inspired several TV and movie spin-offs, including a 1967 film and a 1987 movie. It also influenced other police procedural shows like Law and & Order and CSI. The show's realistic approach to storytelling and its focus on the day-to-day -day work of police officers have become standard elements in the genre. In addition, Dragnet has had a lasting impact on the way police work is portrayed in media. The show's emphasis on thorough investigation and respect for legal procedures has helped shape public perceptions of law enforcement. Despite being a product of its time, Dragnet's influence can still be seen in contemporary police dramas. Please don't send me to jail. Jack Webb, the creator and star of Dragnet, released a book called The Badge featuring controversial stories that were too intense for the television series. 
These stories involve violent crimes such as murder, rape, and child molestation, which were touched on in the show, but often sanitized for television standards. In contrast, the book contained explicit details. In the series, Joe Friday and his partners used the radio call sign 1K80, which represented police headquarters, investigative services, and their unit number. Friday's badge number, 80, holds significance as it matches Babe Ruth's career home runs in the major leagues. After Webb's death, the LAPD retired the number. These details show the thought and care put into the creation of Dragnet, with each element holding a specific meaning or connection. Little puppy out of the car, put in their room. A dog? Now, if they don't know where the hotel was, maybe they can tell us what it was near, huh? The badges and identification cards in Dragnet, a TV series from 1951, were authentic items provided by the Los Angeles Police Department lending realism to the show. This series holds the distinction of being the first American import broadcast on ITV in the United Kingdom, airing on their second day of broadcast on September 23, 1955. Jack Webb, the actor who played Sergeant Joe Friday, had such a significant impact that after his death, the Los Angeles Police Department retired his character's badge number 714 out of respect. This badge originally belonged to his close friend, Lieutenant Dan Cook, Registration business was unfair. Is that so? Yes, yeah, grossly unfair. Well, how do you suggest we... In the Dragnet series from 1951, the role of the real-life LAPD chief of detectives, Thad Brown, was played by Raymond Burr. The show's wardrobe was notable for its extensive use of the color orange, which was worn by both male and female characters, regardless of their skin tone. The production company owned the police cars used in the series. During the first series, early 1950s, Ford mainline sedans were utilized, which were similar to most police cars of that era. One of these cars remained after the series and was used by the city of Fontana, Cot, as a marked police vehicle. It featured a 289 coupe in V8 engine and a three-speed manual transmission. In the 1967-70 series, Ford Fairlane sedans were used even though the LAPD did not use fare lanes for police or detective work. These sedans were accurately equipped as detective units. You said you did some gardening work for Mrs. Howard last Wednesday. That'd be a week ago yesterday, is that right? That's what I said. Any... In the second season of Dragnet, the show was aired on alternate weeks due to the death of Barton Yarbrough, the original partner of main character Friday. This led to a series of cast changes until Ben Alexander took over as Frank Smith. The titles of all but two episodes began with the words The Big, with the exceptions being The Human Bomb and The Big 22 Rifle for Christmas. During the run of the TV series, there was also a radio program with the same name and concept. Both the radio and TV show were popular and well received, providing entertainment to audiences on different platforms. Thank you, Harry. I don't know what I'm going to say to him when I see him. Jack Webb, best known for playing Sergeant Joe Friday on Dragnet in 1967, had a series of partners on the show, with each leaving for various reasons. Barton Yarbrough passed away shortly after filming. Barney Phillips had a lip-wetting habit that proved distracting, and Herbert Ellis was replaced for looking too much like Friday. Ironically, Ben Alexander, who became Friday's permanent partner, initially only wanted to do one episode. Dragnet's influence extended beyond entertainment, as the Los Angeles Police Department used its episodes as training films and even named a police academy auditorium after Webb. This demonstrates the show's impact on law enforcement and its enduring legacy. If you have memories of watching the 1950s TV series Dragnet, we'd love to hear them. Share your experiences and thoughts about how this groundbreaking police procedural may have affected you personally or influenced your view of cinema. Perhaps you admired the show's innovative approach to storytelling, or maybe you simply enjoyed the suspenseful cases and realistic dialogue. Whatever your reason, we'd love to hear from you. By engaging with this post through likes, shares, and comments, you can help keep the legacy of Dragnet alive and connect with others who share your passion for classic television. And if you're not already a subscriber, consider following us for more explorations of cinematic history. 
Together, let's celebrate the enduring appeal of this iconic series and the many ways it has left its mark on popular culture. How about her? Well, she's better looking than that.